Did your first experience of shopping for sewing needles go something like this? You stepped into the store, looking around, found the needles, then saw how many different types there were. Then you started to realize that they all have different numbers on them too. Starting to panic, not even knowing anything about this, starting to think to yourself, I know nothing about sewing, what business do I have in here? Panic sets in at all the confusion and you probably walked away without getting any needles, right? Yeah, it's really confusing, I know. But no longer. In this video, I'm going to explain to you the different types of needles, the different sizes of needles, so you will know what sewing needles to get for your job that you're going to be sewing. <laughs> Welcome back my lovely ladies and gents. It is lovely to see you again. Now if we haven't met yet my name is Evelyn Wood and I'm a dressmaker and here we talk everything about sewing, vintage and fashion. So if it sounds like something you're interested in why not hit that subscribe button because in today's video I need to talk to you about needles. So in a recent video I talked about when it, how to know when it's time to change your needle, like when it's getting blunt. And it was highly, I'll link that video actually up here or down below too, because you should definitely watch that one. But it was highly, highly requested that I make this video about what type of needles do you, uh, there are and how do you know what type of needle to use for what type of fabric you're sewing. Now I want to keep this really simple. So let's break this down so you will be able to understand the types of needles, the sizes of needles, and you'll be able to know what uh, type of needle you will need for your project that you're working on. First of all, you should know that needles are standardized. So the sizes and everything do not refer to anything to do with what machine that they go into. They are the same, uh, they will fit in all brands. So Brother, Janome, you know, Benina, they're all going to fit the same same straight sewer machine brand so you don't have to worry about that. First of all you have the type of needle and then you have needle sizes. Let's start with the types of needles to begin with because the type of needle that you choose will be based upon the type of fabric that you're sewing with to start with. Say for example either a knit or a woven. There are four main types of needles that I think most of you will fall into in your sewing that you'll uh, need and I'll break those down and list them. But there are many, many more as well as specialty, specialty types of needles as well. There, there are a lot. But here are the top four that I think you should concern yourself with. First one is a universal needle and the name is quite that. It is universal. This is what you'll use for all most of your woven fabrics. They can be natural fibers, synthetic, doesn't really matter. But this is your probably most common needle type is a universal. Then you have a ballpoint or they're sometimes called a jersey needle. So these ones, as again the name suggests, are slightly rounded. They have a ball point and they're used for knit fabrics. So these work by instead of as the needle goes down and piercing the knitted fibers and they kind of break the fibers as they go because they're too sharp, it's rounded. So it kind of pushes the fibers to each side. And so it can actually get through those knitted, knitted uh, fibers much more easily. So you'll use a ballpoint or a jersey needle for most of your knit fabrics. Then you'll have a stretch needle and this is one further. So this will you will use for your super stretchy fabrics. So think lycra, two-way stretches, power mesh, those really super duper stretchy fabrics. Uh, it, they're designed to really help with the uh, skipped stitches that you can get a lot with uh, those super stretchy fabrics. So you want to use a stretch needle for those super super stretchy fabrics and you'll get a lot less skipped stitches. And the fourth needle type is a sharps needle. Sounds a bit silly, I know, but yes, these are sort of super sharp needles. And you'll use these for densely woven fabrics like a super fine silk, microfiber, or for sewing multiple layers of fabrics together. These are quite popular for quilting, for example, because there's often many, many layers. So you use an extra sharp needle when you really need something extra sharp for those super fine silks, anything tightly woven that you really need to be able to pierce it through really nice. Now, they are the main four, but there are plenty of other specialty needles, like uh, a jeans needle, you can get um, 
leather, top stitching, twin needles, wing needles, there's a lot. So you get the idea. But those four are the main ones, and especially if you're a beginner, that's where you're going to fall into. You'll only need to really worry about those. But know that there are other needles for other jobs that you might need down the track in your sewing. Then within the types of needles, it's then broken down into needle sizes. And the size refers to the thickness of the needle that actually goes through the fabric, that part of it. You'll likely see numbers from eight to 18, and that is the American numerals numbers used, or something like a 60 to 110. And those are the European uh, measurement standards that they use. On the needles that I use mostly, they're both of these sizes are always written on there. And the smaller the size, the smaller the needle is. So it's pretty easy to remember. Let's break this down to the most sort of common uh, needle sizes and what fabrics you might use them for. Let's start on the lower scale, so a needle size of an 8 or 10 or a 60 or 70. These are used for your super fine fabrics, so think cotton voile, think anything sheer, georgettes, chiffon, all those sheer delicate light fabrics, even light linings. This is the sort of um, needle sizes that you'll be using for these ones, and depending obviously how delicate it is, how small the number. Then you have the most common, common needle of all, the size 12 or the size 80. In a, you know, a universal, in a 12 uh, or an 80, is the sort of baseline standard. You'll find that in most sewing machines that you get like off the shelf, they're going to have this sort of needle size in it. This is good for all your basic cottons or your shirting material, light wools, quilting cottons, rayons, all of those kind of mid weight, just nice and easy, not too thick, not too thin. So you wanna use that 80 or that size 12 for most of your sewing and all that sort of standard weight fabrics. Moving on to a size 14 or a 90. This is kind of fairly standard as well and you'll use for mostly slightly heavier cottons like a drill or most linens usually like a size 14. Light denims also work really well on this needle size too. Moving up to the 16 or the 100, that's when you get into your real like heavier denims, canvas, uh, all these types of heavier fabrics, upholstery, that sort of thing. And there's even one higher again, you move up to like leather and you're really, really, really heavy duty. So you get the idea of where we're going on the scale of these numbers, right? So for example, let's break it down. Say you have a plain cotton fabric. So you have a plain cotton fabric, not stretch, we've got a nice woven, it's a nice medium weight, it's not too light, it's not sheer, but it's not really thick and heavy, nice medium weight. For this, I would use a universal needle type with a size 12 needle, yeah? Let's say you have this lovely kind of Georgette uh, fabric here. It is, sorry, this one's probably a crepe, not a Georgette, it's scraps. <laughs> Let's say we're sewing this one. So this is somewhat sheer, so I can, you probably can't, but I can see through this slightly. It's kind of um, loose, but it's really quite light. So something like this fabric, I would use a universal needle type with maybe more like a size 10 needle size. Might be a bit better on this particular fabric, but you might find it sews well with a size 12 as well. It's all about testing your fabric before you go ahead and sew your garment with it. Then say for example, I have like, I don't know, I'm doing some quilting or making some wadding and I'm using like lots of layers and padding and, and doing something really thick like this. For this thing I might use a, again, a universal type or perhaps a sharp needle would be what I would use to this to get through all of these layers. And then I would look at the fabric weight. Now this is pretty kind of heavy fabric that I'm using here, all this wadding and padding. So then I might actually use a needle size of maybe 14 or 16, depending on how heavy the actual fabric is that you're using. And then say, for example, you have a, a knitted sort of poly cotton uh, fabric, which I don't have to show you right now, but you know what I mean. Being a knitted fabric, I straight away would want to use a ballpoint needle. And if it, look at then the weight of the fabric, it's probably about a medium sort of weight. So you'll choose a, probably a size 12 ballpoint needle for something like that would be ideal. Now, as you can see, every fabric does require a different needle to get the correct, uh, to get the correct sewing really. So it's about experimenting. 
uh, I always like to sort of start at about a standard size 12 and then I don't throw a lot of um, knitwear so I'm not concerned with um, ball points too often so I'm talking just um, on a universal side of things usually start with a size 12 and then have a look at your fabric weight and go from there is it super fine do you need a smaller needle size or are you going really heavy and you need that heavier that larger uh, needle size to to suit that fabric and as particularly if you're sewing satins and georgettes, those finer fabrics can be the most troublesome sometimes. And often you definitely need that sort of sharp needle or that smaller needle size to get a nice fine finish. If you find it's all sort of bunching up and causing all sorts of things, you probably need to adjust the needle size or put a new one in, maybe both, to get that really nice finish. Now, if you sew a lot of fabrics that are all the same, you won't have to change your needle a lot. For instance, most of my sewing, I use about a size 12 needle for most of my projects, uh, unless I go do something super fine that requires a finer needle, or I do something out of the ordinary. But most of my sewing does sort of fall into the size 12 category. Now we all learn from each other and I love that you guys uh, all have your input and your experiences as well. I'd love if you can put in your co the comments below what uh, you find your needle sizes you use the most. Um, write it down below what any tips that you have for someone and make sure you read all those comments so that you can know which needles you might want to invest in first off. So please um, like this video if you liked it, uh, leave your comment below. Thank you so very much for watching and for giving me the request to make this video. Look forward to seeing you all again in the next one. And until then, bye. And the smaller the number, the thinner the needle is. Uh, so, and the smaller the needle, the smaller the size.